debt, the state of owing money borrowed by one party from another to be paid back at a later date. Hey guys, welcome to Casual Economics. Today we're going to be talking about America's debt. Now, America's debt is the largest in the world for a single country. So, you can add that to the list of things we're number one at. Now, there are three major causes of America's debt. First, the government incurs debt when it operates at a deficit, meaning it spends more money than it takes in. The government's primary source of income is from taxes. It then spends this money on the military, Medicare, infrastructure, and all sorts of other various social programs. Yeah, so in order to not operate at a deficit, all the government has to do is prepare a budget in which their spending is equal to or less than its income. Seems like a pretty simple concept, but this has been something they have been unable to do for several years. In fact, since 1970, the federal government has run a deficit for every single year except for four years from 1998 to 2001. Now, now who was president during this time? B Bill, was that you? Hey. So in order to fix our debt issue, we have to first fix our deficit issue. So anyone with an elementary education could see that this can be done in two ways. Either the government can increase its income or decrease its spending. Yeah, so naturally the government has been decreasing its income and increasing its spending. So why even now with our 20 trillion dollars in debt is President Trump calling for tax cuts? Well, the reasoning is most likely this. In the short term, cutting taxes increases Americans income because less of your money is going to taxes. Now, when you have more money, you spend more money on goods and services. More money being spent in an economy means an economy grows. Now when an economy grows, the population becomes wealthier. And when people are wealthier, they have more taxable income. So theoretically, by cutting taxes now, the overall tax revenue will increase in the future. So this is most likely Trump's reasoning for his proposed tax cuts. Either that, or he just wants to give tax breaks to all of his rich friends. Yeah, who really knows. In any case, cutting taxes now is only going to increase our debt, at least in the short run. But there is still the other option. We just have to stop spending so much money. Simple, right? It may seem that way, but if we spend less, that means social programs are going to get less funding, or the military, or Medicare, or infrastructure, all of these things need funding, and Congress can't seem to agree on what should get funding and what should get cut. And if Congress can't agree on a budget, the government shuts down, like we saw in 2013. In order to avoid a shutdown, a less than perfect budget is often passed, like we just saw this month, passing for the federal budget for the 2018 fiscal year shows that the U.S. government will be operating at a $1.5 trillion deficit, which means more debt. Now, Congress has previously placed a debt ceiling, meaning a limit as to the amount of debt the U.S. can incur. But when we reach that limit, Congress's solution has not been to fix the debt, but simply increase the debt ceiling. Great idea, right? It would be like incurring tons of credit card debt and then when you finally hit your absolute limit and you have no idea what to do, going out and buying a new car. Sure, that new car might be fun, but financially it makes literally no sense. Except apparently to the government. But we cannot keep increasing this debt ceiling forever because eventually the people we're in debt to are going to come knocking and that will not be a good day for America. By the way, who does America owe all of this money to anyway? Well, America funds its debt in two ways. The lesser of the two is intra-government spending, 
in which the government borrows money from other departments within its own government. A notable one being the Social Security Fund. You see, right now, the Social Security Fund is running a surplus, meaning more people are paying into Social Security than it is paying out. This is primarily thanks to the so-called generation of baby boomers, which, for the most part, are still in the workforce and are therefore still paying into Social Security. So, the government has been borrowing from the Social Security Fund and giving it to other departments that need the money. This is all good for now, but when the baby boomers start retiring, which is very soon by the way, I'm not saying the Social Security Fund is going to be totally boned, but yeah, that is exactly what I'm saying. But that's a topic for a later video. But the main way the government funds its debt is by issuing and selling treasury bonds. A treasury bond is basically an IOU from the government saying, if you let us borrow this money, we will pay you back at a later date with interest. So who buys these bonds? Well, anyone can buy one. Private investors, investment banks, foreign countries. Now, the government has been doing this thing where they have been creating new treasury bonds in order to repay the mature bonds and the interest that they owe. So that would be like giving someone an IOU and then repaying that IOU with another IOU, which is a pretty stupid idea. So in conclusion, the government is run by a bunch of idiots and we're all screwed. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. Like and subscribe, I guess.